right, so this is a chapter on periodic trends. Okay, so you must know like the periodic table is not something we memorize. It's like a consultation book or a consultation table, not a book. It's a table that we use to consult, okay, to look up stuff. So we never memorize anything. Okay, I think before you were born, uh, this is what I grew up with. There was something called a phone book. Have you heard of a phone book? Okay. Uh, they used to give them out for free. You know, it had yellow pages, white pages. <laughs> it would list all the businesses. It would also list addresses, so you can also look up people on the phone book. So the periodic table, I kind of think of it as a phone book because you can look up stuff. I mean, we never memorize anything. That's why, you know, I always want to tell you that um, you know, have your periodic table by you anytime you have a chemistry exam. So let's see if we can look at this and probe into this a little bit further. Um, going down is called a group. Going down the periodic table is called a group. Okay, going across the periodic table is called a period. Going down is called a group. Going across is called a period. So we can have something that's n equals 1, period 1, period 2, period 3, period 4, period 5, so on and so forth. Okay? And going down is a group. Some important groups I'd like you to know. Okay, group 1 or 1a, these are called the alkaline metals. Anybody know what charge they like to form? They would like to be plus one. Okay. These are the group two metals. Okay, these are called the alkaline earth metals. Okay, does anybody know what type of ions they would like to be? Nice, plus two ions. Very good. Okay would like to be plus two ions. I'm talking about group two or group 2A of the periodic table. Okay, let's skip over to group uh, 17 or 7A, depending on peri what periodic table you're using. Okay, these are called the halogens. Anybody know what type of charge they would like to be? Okay, these will form minus one ions, nicely done. And then fine, uh, not finally, but um, these are group 18 or 8A are called the noble gases. Okay, you may also hear of it being called inert gases. Okay, so they will not form any ions. Right here um, is this little rectangle here. Okay, this is called the n minus one block. Okay, the n minus one block. And they're also oh, it doesn't look so hot. The n minus one block. These are also called the transition metals. This here is the n minus two block going down here. Okay. 
Um, by the way, the n minus 2 block, this is also called the d block. Okay? Make sure you know that term, the d block. And this is called the f block. Okay? The f block. All right, these here are called the lanthanides. And these here are called the actinides. Actinides. Okay? So a lot of iPhone material or smartphone material, I think they mine it from this area of the periodic table, the lanthanides and the actinides. All right, let's move on here. This right here is called the S block. Okay, forget hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is weird, so I will not do hydrogen here. Okay, this is called the S block. And then finally, this is called the P block. They have P electrons. electrons that go in their p orbitals. It's called the p block. So we have electrons, valence electrons that go in the s orbital, valence electrons here that go into the d orbital. Uh, here we have valence electrons that go into the p orbital. Here we have valence electrons that go into the f orbital. Okay, the f orbital. So I hope that is a review. Okay, we talked about electron configuration a little bit. Um, well, uh, you know, that was chapter seven. So all of this should be somewhat of a review. Okay, what do what do I mean by periodic trends? There are three trends that I'd like for you to know. There's three of them. There's three trends I'd like for you to know. Let's go over them, and then um, we will end class. I'll go over these and then um, we'll talk more about it in class uh, more thoroughly on Tuesday when I wrap it up. And then we will reach the climax of the course, which would be chapters 9 and 10. Okay, the first periodic tr uh, trend here is effective nuclear charge. It's called Z of F. This is also known as shielding, okay? Shielding. Shielding, okay? All right, so this effective nuclear charge, Z of F, um, is going to increase across a period like this. And it will increase down a group like this. What is this effective nuclear charge? Okay, so how can I define this? Uh, I'll define it like this. It is the uh, charge the electron uh, fields from the nucleus. Now, how about I say this? The, the charge I'm trying to give you a definition that's not so textbook. <laughs> Textbookish. Okay. 
the charge of the nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons. that is attracted to core electrons. That is okay, not valence electrons, but core electrons. Okay, so what does all of this mean? Okay, so uh, I will explain this and then we'll finish this off. Uh, on Tuesday. So this is the first of our three trends. Effective nuclear charge. Charge of the nucleus that is attracted to the core electrons. So you do know, right, that um, uh, the Bohr's model, we have protons which are positively charged, we have neutrons, and then we have electrons that sort of, you know, they're electron clouds that are sort of um, orbiting in their orbitals. So we have some electrons that are you know, closer to the nucleus. Okay, we'll call it that. We have some electrons that are sort of outer to the nucleus, right? Do everyone agree with this? Okay, outer electrons and core electrons. Right. As an example, let me give me as an example. All right, so I'm the teacher of the class. I am the nucleus. Okay. I'm the center. Okay, I'm the center of this class. And let's pretend that all of you are electrons. Okay. Let's say I yell really, really loud, okay? I yell really loud, I won't do it, but let's say I scream, okay? At the top of my lungs, okay? Study chemistry or test tomorrow or what, test next Thursday. I say at the top of my lungs, okay? Who faces that? Who hears that the most? Okay, these would be the core electrons, okay? They face it, they hear it. Who would hear it the least? Okay, get less, okay? The back. Okay, we will call them the outer electrons, okay, the outer electrons. So that is what shielding is. It's that you guys here, the core electrons, my core, my core four, okay, my core electrons, because I'm the nucleus, right? I'm the instructor. Uh, the core electrons kind of get more attracted to me. They are more, they hear me better. Okay, if I scream, they face it more. Okay, if I yell, their ears will hurt more. <coughs> than the outer electrons in the back. Okay, so that is what shielding is. So the idea is that you know these are more attracted because just they're close by, okay, the first row. These are more attracted. And what about the outer electrons? Would they be more or less? They would be less attracted. Okay, they would be less attracted just because they're outside. They experience the nucleus less. Okay, they experience the nucleus less. So this is the trend of shielding. If you increase across a period, okay, there's more electrons. Okay, more electrons. So obviously more shielding by the core. If you go down a group, remember when we go down to group, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. Okay, we're going to higher and higher and higher energy levels, higher and higher principal quantum numbers. So higher and higher energy levels, more and more and more, what, outer or inner? More and more and more outer. So obviously there'll be more and more shielding. Okay, there'll be more and more shielded. So this is the trend I want you to know. Okay, effective nuclear charge increases across a row, we call that a period, and it increases down a column, we call that a group. All right, we have a couple of more to do on Tuesday. I'll wrap this chapter up on Tuesday. Thursday, we will start Lewis structures, and we'll also take your exam. Okay, Tuesday, you also have a lab.